Your next question here, you've got what is the biggest challenge most new adjusters face when starting out and how can they prepare? So um, we might have hit a little bit of this, but what do you feel like the biggest challenge most new adjusters face when starting out? I would think it's the cycle time because I would think a lot of new adjusters, you know, they're having to figure out how to go out to the house, evaluate the house or evaluate the damage, they're having to scope it, they're having to do an estimate, they're probably using a software program that they're still new at, and then whenever they send it, it may possibly come back to them, and then by the time it comes back to them, they're probably working on something else, so then they're having to play catch up, sure. but I may be wrong, because I'm new, but I would think maybe the cycle time. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. 100%. And that's when I was looking at this question, I was, that's, this was the answer. So it, you're, you're intuitively, you're, you're feeling that there's, there's, there's a lot of moving parts, right? And you're, because you haven't been put into the, to the position of having a bunch of claims and having like your, your phone catching fire in your pocket because it's, it won't stop ringing. Um, what happens to adjusters? The, I would say that the biggest new, the biggest challenge for, for adjusters for new adjusters is going to be um, being able to prioritize all of the things that seem like that they're the number one priority, right? So every time your phone rings, this is what, this is what happens. And this is how people get just burned to the ground, right? Is that they will say, okay, well, um, the guy in orientation that was sitting next to me said, he's just going to get out there and just scope and just like, you know, just, just figure it out. Right. He's just going to figure it out. Right. Well, it seems like they really want us to get out there and like, you know, scope the losses and then do inspections and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. So they, so that's what they do. They build their sort of work flow for, for lack of a better term, um, around going in and being busy. Right, and being busy is not the exa is not anywhere near the same thing as being productive. So they get out there and they start scoping, and they get a couple of days into it, and their and their phone starts to blow up in their pocket because the things people that they've already scoped maybe they haven't called everybody. They're just like in the morning they're just calling like four people or six people and saying, "Hey, I'm going to come out to your house today," and the people they haven't called yet are calling them, and the people that they've already inspected are calling them, wondering what's going to happen next. They don't know what to tell them, right? So they're not telling them anything. They're just, maybe they're not even, they're just showing up at the person's house, leaving a note on the door saying that they were there. <clears throat> and so there may be like, you know, this person might be in the middle of like doing an inspection or looking at a roof and their phone is ringing and ringing and they're answering every single call, standing up on a roof while they're trying to inspect a roof. So they're not prioritizing what they're doing at the moment, right? So, they, you know, the way to um, overcome this challenge is to have an idea of exactly all the things that are going to happen every day on cat, right? What you and that, that involves in knowing what the, the overall workflow or the overall process of one claim is, right? So then you just multiply that. So they, if they get a claim turned in, guaranteed it's going to get kicked back to them. 99% uh, probability that, that any claims that they turn in in their first, they're on their first term, we're all going to get kicked back for something, right? So, but if they if they start turning, they close some claims and those, those files start getting kicked, returned to them for corrections and they're still out in the field and they're still writing up new claims, then, and this is a major, major no-no, um, the claims that are requiring corrections get put to the bottom of the pri their priority list because everybody's still screaming and they still got to get out there and look at do the first inspections and they don't want to get in trouble and whatever. And, you know, my manager said, just get out there and scope, right? And people's, people's managers will tell them to do this. And this is wrong. The, the worst advice I can, anybody can give. It's guaranteed. It's almost a guarantee to cause a person to completely fail. So what you're going to be doing when you're on cat uh, whether you're brand new or you've been doing this for 20 years, is you're going to be handed a stack of files, we'll say 30 files, and what you have to do is you have to contact, you have to, first, let me back up. You get handed your files, and then you have to figure out where all those are, 
right? So you, you look at Google Maps, put everybody, you know, you go to exact analysis and just do this and then just put pins where everybody's house is. And then you build a schedule based on how many you can reasonably close every day. Build out that schedule. And then you stack them in the order that you're going to do them, starting with the most recent one to, to the furthest one. And you start calling everybody, right? And you call, and you call them all, all, the whole stack all the way through. And then you take that stack and you put it, you sit down with Xactimate and you input all those into Xactimate. And you set those file, each one of those files up, right? Because they, they assign those files to you and you printed the loss report from Xactimate. So now you're going to go in and you're going to status the file. You're going to update the diary and say, hey, this first contact, first contact, first contact, attempted first contact, left message, first contact, first contact, no answer, Con you know, called agent, you know, attempting to track down phone number for this person, first contact, so on and so forth, right? Your phone's going to ring while you're doing that. I'm ignoring the phone when it rings, when I'm doing any of these things. It might take me a day or a day and a half to make all those contacts, right? Which sounds crazy uh, when you say it like that, but it's true. Everybody has to be contacted. And then you're going to go out and start scoping, right? Scope the loss. Take that. So this is what I tell new people to do. Day one, 9 o'clock in the morning is your first appointment. You know, maybe maybe even 10 o'clock because that gives you a chance to kind of like you get around like really bad rush hour traffic in a lot of places, you know, if you go just slightly later in the morning. Just take as long as you need to scope that one, however long it takes. I'm not answering the phone. I'm not looking at email. I'm not looking at, you know, I'll check text or whatever. My manager might be texting me about something. Um, only if it's emergency or if it's like it seems like something pressing from a manager, am I going to answer the phone? And then I'm going to take that claim, that one claim, and I'm going to go straight to the help room or to the my field support person or my manager or whoever was going to help me with this, and I'm going to close that claim that day. And I'm going to repeat that. And then it's, uh, this is where the momentum and the confidence start to come in because I, I think that the biggest challenge um, in this big challenge for, for new adjusters is um, – not going through the whole process of closing a claim uh, start to finish. Because once you do that, once you do it one time, then the second one is way easier because you know what to expect, right? Um, so you you're closing claims. You're only scoping um, a day, inspecting in a day what you can reasonably close that same day, right? You're not going to like... Because the second you like you scope three and you can only close one that day, those two get rolled over to the next day, and now you got to you see had three lined up for that. You're going to try to close five, and you're not going to do it, right? And that's where the snowball happens, and people get absolutely spun out. So prioritizing, um, and then your time management, right? So the time management piece is to say, all right, well, I'm scoping this many. I'm going to scope that one. And then I'm going to take, go take lunch, and we take an hour and 15-minute lunch, and then I'm going to go to the help room. But during that hour and 15-minute lunch, I, I'm going to answer, listen to my voicemail and call everybody back that called me, right? Have a place in your schedule every single day to do all the things. You've got a place in your schedule to do corrections every single day. Or, you know, if you don't have corrections, there's always something to do. There's always something to do. So you've got time block. You have time blocked off to do your admin work, you could call it. Then you've got inspections, then you've got, I always have a time block, midday, um, maybe mid-afternoon when it's like just ridiculously hot outside. I'm hiding out in a Panera or a Starbucks or a Qdoba or whatever, or just under a tree in my truck uh, answering phone calls or getting back to people that have called. So you, you kind of have like office hours. And then maybe you do one more claim later that afternoon, right? So you have... And then any new claims that you get, you, call, you can either call during that afternoon break, afternoon time block, or in the evening, right? Um, so every, everything that you do when you're on CAT has a, has a spot, right? In the fast track to deployment, um, we teach the full framework for that. So that, you know, even if you get on CAT and they say, hey, listen, you know, we're going to have all these help rooms and it's going to be great and it's going to be super easy for you because we're going to have all this help and stuff and you get there and it's not there, which absolutely, well, you know, we all have, all, that's, all that helps over in North Carolina where that big hurricane hit, but you're on this other hurricane and they send you to, you know, 
Louisiana, and all our help room people are in North Carolina. So now you're out there by yourself. At least with the, the fast track um, setup, that framework you have, it tells you what to do, right? So that you can at least like not let things fall through the cracks. You cannot make your manager mad by not returning their calls, so on and so forth. Every place has a little spot that you can catch all the balls, right, that are coming at you. <clears throat> so prioritizing, thinking that everything is a priority, which is it's not, and knowing uh, the overall like workflow for your time, right? Being able to manage your time and it's a skill and it's, it's a, you know, you could have like a blueprint for it, um, like a template that you can just like lay over your first cat and say, these are all the things that have to be done. And these are when I do them. And then it takes that piece off of your shoulders and it's a lot less stressful and you'll be able to have more room in there to learn to, to build those reps and to, and to ramp up your cycle time, right? To get faster and faster. The, I would say, final thing on this, is that a brand new adjuster on their very first storm, you shouldn't be worried about hitting this cycle time numbers because you're not going to be able to. As long as you're closing claims and the claims because you, in the off season, or you prepared, you prepared for this by getting your exact mate certifications and going to trainings and all this kind of stuff. Your estimates look pretty okay, right? They're decent enough. You're, 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 they, they can, they're going to look at this stuff and say, this person's brand new. How, how are they doing? Looks like they, they've they got the basics and they're, you know, they're friendly. I really like talking to Erin on the phone. She's really nice. She, she returns my calls within two hours or whatever, uh, so on and so forth. I like Erin. Let's pour some resources to Erin so that, she can we can we can develop her because that's what they're looking for as well as to, for people to they can develop so you don't have to long story short on this you don't have to be perfect right out of the gate you just have to show that you got the, the fundamentals down right and that you're friendly and fun to work with not maybe you know but you could say fun to work with you're, you're easy to work with and that you are adaptable and that tr you're trainable right those are those are the main things that they're, they're looking for not that you get out there and you go on a scoping rampage and you try to scope a to day and it's like you're super busy man oh you know i, I can't i can't get on the phone man because i gotta you know I'm, I'm i'm on my seventh one today and I'm, I'm gonna try to look at eight and you have you've, you've looked at like you've done it for four days and you haven't closed any claims or haven't sat down even to bother to try and write the estimates because you're too tired at the end of the day or you've like started on one or two and you have no claims closed you're gonna get in trouble a lot of trouble, not just from like your manager, but you're going to, you're going to wipe out. It's, it's a recipe for disaster. Okay. That was all well and good. But what if you haven't even gotten started yet? You're not quite sure like what an adjuster license is or even which one or ones to get. You don't know what gear and tools to buy. Do you even need a drone? In short, you want to know how to get started as a claims adjuster. How can you start adjusting claims? for money, right? We put together a comprehensive seven video series explaining in detail, step-by-step, step, the complete beginner's guide to getting started as an independent property adjuster. This is where you wanna start. And the best part, it's completely free and you can get started watching it right now at adjustertv.com slash start. In the meantime, YouTube has picked out a special video just for you. See you in the next one.